building an indie business in the center of venture capital. I am Alex Edmonds. People on the internet call me Supreme Rumham, and this is the Building an Indie Business Podcast. All right, so today this episode is very different from my usual stuff. I'm here with the Brendan Weinstein, and <laughs> and we're going to be discussing TikTok and how TikTok makes money um, from uh, B two B and how they might be making money from consumers. And then I have my own ideas about how they should make some money. Um, so we're going to be talking about that. Brendan, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for asking. I uh, it's nice to you know be into the new year. Hopefully this year brings us some better luck than last year. And uh, just like always, it's the best day of the week when I can, you know, catch a podcast episode with you. Hey. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's get into it. So uh, you told me about this earlier about how TikTok makes money through ads. And I thought this was uh, really interesting. So can you give everyone an overview? Um, yes, yeah, sure. So. TikTok differently than um, the uh, prototypical uh, social media platforms, which are selling advertisements based on tracking of user data, compiling your interests, demographics, right? Your, your tendencies on site, and then dynamically generating you advertisements in the hope that you'll click through it, right? That's how they generate their ad revenue. Um, well, with TikTok not being, uh, a, a, a platform that actually, um, stores and, and analyzes user data in terms of person to person connections, um, it monitors interests, but it does not monitor where else you're experiencing, um, video or audio on the web, e-commerce on the web. Su such as Facebook does with its um, ability to have backlinks and its um, cross-domain tracking where it can actually tell if you've left the site, purchased something and come back. Now that's where their advertisement value comes in, right? They know something specific about you that you did not choose to do on Facebook, came back, and now they're still able to advertise that information to you, right? TikTok being more inclusive than that, it's been much more focused on business, right? So like the biz, the brands and the influencers are the revenue generators for TikTok. Um, if you've seen, if have any of you seen like the Hype House or like the, you know, the, the um, two different getaway houses that the influencers of TikTok basically get to live in and film and create immersive experiences for the audience on TikTok. Well, that doesn't come at no cost, right? The house is an expense of um, TikTok, right? The uh, branding. So let's consider um, sponsorship clothing, um, designer, you know, dressed to the nines, all of the women makeup artists, right? They're, they're basically putting on almost mini fashion shoots for themselves and I, and all, all the power to them, but that's an expense and that's a not marketing expense that you would see, um, you know what I mean? In a normal ad, but it's a operating expense for them to do marketing. So I don't see TikTok so much as advertisement as it is as marketing, marketing the platform to express, you know, what you could be if you signed up and became a creator, what he, she, or her could be, right? I think that's much more relevant and valuable to them. So um, there's, you know, a big controversy going around lately about obviously the United States and TikTok's um, current predicament that they're in. And this is something I'm not going to touch on politically. I'm not 
so much, you know, mean involved nor interested, and they don't think it's appropriate to touch on that. But what I will say is that um, TikTok is understood to be unique, right? But it's not subsidi- It's not wholly owned. ByteDance is the company that owns TikTok, the Asian corporation um, based out of China. And that's where a lot of the concern comes in, right? So I believe that if they're not actually adver- selling advertisements on the kind of data that Facebook, Twitter, and the other platforms are, which is consume as much information as we know about you, use that to sell to um, retailers or those interested in, in, you know, in advertising to you. Um, that's the mission on TikTok. The mission is much more focused towards, um, what is interesting right now? What is trending? Right? So who amongst the TikTok influencers are together and what type of, um, creativity or style clothing are they wearing, right? There's a lot more interest-based um, graph that's been designed versus a social graph, which is based upon how many people you know and then their second and third degree connections, right? So if you or I or someone out there were to post a video and I follow you and like it, my followers are now going to be inclined to see that video, right? Mm -hmm. TikTok differently than that is an interest graph. Notice how when you open up TikTok, you're just seeing a for you feed and it's just some of the top videos always. Um, It's not just who you follow, you know, videos your friends have liked. It's much more about what is interesting to the people who have been following and are interested in the types of videos that are being distributed at the top level. So like the most viral videos, um, that to me took a level away from the concern of, are they tracking my data? If they're using interests and not who I am and who I know, That seems to me like it's a little bit more secure, whereas Facebook can guarantee at an 89% 89 guaranteed rate that 24 hours before you change your relationship status, they will know. That is harnessing too much data about a user. So I think that the whole, you know, concern is a little bit over far-fetched. And I think that they actually probably are doing a a phenomenal job in creating their revenue streams today while being hindered by the U S um, uh, you know, different sanctions and attempted legality and injunctions they've placed against them. Um, so when TikTok differently than Instagram created its, you know, influencer creator, model, everyone on, in, on TikTok can be a creator, right? Use encouraging, you know, post videos, share them, become viral, have the audio behind you, which trending that's, that's the feeling of TikTok, right? Um, now what I feel is sort of dangerous with that, right? Is that ByteDance still does control the majority of, which is their parent company, the majority of that data and or storage of that information that us TikTok users in the United States and across the world are actually interacting with. Now, TikTok is a private company, right? It is owned by a Chinese organization, ByteDance. If anyone could tell me another ByteDance application, I'd be quite shocked. Alex, can you? Um, no, I know they owned Musical.ly and then they turned it into TikTok, but I don't know much after that. Correct. So 
Their other applications include Lark, which is in China, the um, Google Workspace, basically. You have your apps, your email, your chat, Drive, right? They've that, a music label with music streaming app. And then in China, TikTok exists in an entirely different form. It's called Baidu. This is because the TikTok US and rest of the world regulations are different than China's, right? Yeah. More reason to believe that the scrutiny they're receiving may or may not be warranted, but it certainly seems that there's steps to that have been taken to differentiate the two and not just consolidate all data in one and hold on to it. Um, I'm not sure how you feel, Alex. Are you, I, I know that you're not really a TikTok user. Um, are you at all interested in like what they might be doing with your information? Had they had it? Kind of. So uh, I was on TikTok to promote my book back in July and um, it just didn't work out to like, I couldn't get traction. So I kind of just stopped using it. And then I found out that all, all the, all the, like they're, they're taking the data. They're like, what I didn't like was that they were like saving what I was putting on the keyboard. And so I deleted it after that. And I deleted my account too. But, uh, my nephew just made a TikTok account. So I might jump back on it to support him and watch his videos. Um, I mean, that definitely certainly makes sense. I would, I would bet that almost all, if, in fact, yes, all analytical tracking tools will be tracking your key clicks. Um, on click is an analytic event. Um, mm, yeah. Which, which keys on a keyboard, that's a little tricky. Um, but you want to know what's clicked therefore like you can follow the funnel so you know them tracking and understanding alex edmonds right clicked on this item at like this second is way less relevant than user id anonymized right followed this conversion funnel and then how many other uniques are like him right or her that to me is a fair way to analyze your data to be able to know whom exactly clicked on what and listen is listening to what by no one, no, um, anonymous, um, like name and data masking. And beyond that, it's strictly right there, a picture of you, your account and what you're listening to at the moment. I'm fine with that if it's only my followers, right? So for me, the whole model of TikTok is a little bit, um, I guess, um, scattered. I feel like there's a few things they, I mentioned at the beginning, they do well, but then there's a lot of things that don't really make sense to me in terms of the business model. And that's where I want to touch on next. Right. So, uh, I, yeah, I was a little confused. So for Twitter, I, I log into like Twitter ads and I create the ad myself and then I give them my budget and then I put in my credit card and that's how a Twitter ad gets born. So like, how do you, how do you advertise on TikTok? Let's say I'm, I, I want to advertise revenue research on TikTok. How would I do that? Um, okay. So there are a couple different ways, right? Um, one of them is certainly their brand um, influencers and their brand partnerships are what are you mean generating it and deriving those um, those advertisements. So differently than seeing a Abercrombie and Fitch shirt as an ad on Instagram, you may see a certain celebrity right? Wearing all, let's say Nike apparel, right? And that post was paid and or split in revenue between both the influencer, the TikTok user and TikTok for allowing 
the advertisement of another brand, right, to represent and be represented at such a large viewership on their platform. If I have 10 million viewers and you throw a Nike shirt on me, 10 million people are seeing that. Do you think the parent company doesn't have a right to say, um, well, without my cut, they're not allowed to wear the Nike shirt, right? That's only fair. So in my opinion, it's a lot more safe knowing that you're not actually programmatically being distributed ads that could be from anywhere filled with malware. You click on it and, and now someone's tracking you. It's much more advertisement and um, marketing uh, oriented in music, apparel, events, um, promotions, right? Um, filters and, and different types of, of, of interactive immersive experiences on the platform. So what I think is they have definitely a business model that is here to stay as long as they're not only focused on the strategic advertisement, you know, mass quantity of users, low cost per click, generate, you know what I mean, advertisement revenue through the mass interactive um, and mass actions being triggered on the site. Um, so TikTok's main revenue sources, um, ByteDance as the owner made about $17 billion in 2019. Oh, well, wow. Okay. 17 billion. But then in comparison, um, I believe that somewhere along the lines, yeah, the, the Disney's make 20 to $30 billion in revenue a quarter. Mm -hmm. Right. So bike dance, as we said, China's audience being that much larger can make sense, but TikTok, $17 billion in revenue. What can they capture of that with only 200 million of the one of the 2.1 billion users on the bike dance platform? Yeah. And 2019, I didn't even know what TikTok was. So imagine what that number is now. Did you know what Musical.ly was? Uh, kind of. Um, did you know what Vine was? Yeah. Great. It's their vision of blending, you mean, the um, best capabilities and best, um, uh, most intriguing uh, features of each, which made it short form, right? Like, it changed by allowing you to add clips and, and you know what I mean? Like almost like different scenes, but it's biggest difference was the music. Oh yeah. Unlike any other social platform, they, by the by being an affiliate of bike dance, bike dance has a music streaming application in which it has the same licenses to music that all our US, US streaming platforms do. So when you hear that music in the background, that's legally um, licensed to be able to be played by you without you taking credit in the background of your video. That's not the case on Instagram or, or Twitter. If you go viral and there's a song playing behind you, that record label will come after you and they will, they will serve you with maybe not actually follow through, but it is their right to sue you. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's why reels on Instagram hasn't been as successful. Would you uh, say? Yes, I would say that's part of it. And also I think that they are actually, um, working on with Facebook, having the ability to, um, stream, like maybe not the direct MP3 audio of it, but stream the videos in the live section. So if you could play the video behind, right. While you're doing, um, your preparation and acting out your video or your reel, that could work. 
but that loses the whole purpose because as you cut scenes, the song doesn't change. So for me, TikTok is fits it sort of within its own niche in a space that felt so inundated a few years ago, but now feels like it's segmenting and separating partially due to, you know, fear of the, you know, consumer, um, our current government and, um, uh, like not the non-information our government's given and the lack of updates we've had to what's going on in terms of the e-commerce TikTok Oracle deal. Um, so it's a little scary, I believe. I think that their revenue is certainly taking a hit right now because they don't know how to prepare for a, in, you know what I mean, experience or an environment in which they're not allowed to actually generate revenue in the United States or be a part of, you know what I mean, this United States ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So that That is scary. I, I would say definitely scary. Um, many people disagreed with me recently and said, What's two? What's two hundred million to their two point one billion users in Asia who are spending more per user? Average revenue per user for in Asia is higher than in the United States in terms of mobile apps. It's another two hundred thousand users. Two hundred thousand users are not are from the United States. One point eight billion are in China. Yeah, but like, you don't want to cut yourself off from a section of the world just because. I I totally agree. I love that you brought that up. That's why they've been trying to work out e-commerce agreements with the United States on how they could have a separate application, but still be earning the revenue in which the business model they've generated allows for. Right. So uh, I want to recap real quick. So in terms of B2B, they make money from ads. They make money from the filters and the music as well. Um, they make music. I mean, they make um, money not um, syndicating the music. They make money in not having to pay per license for the music because they own a licensing distribution deal. Okay. So wait, every time... I use like a Kid Cudi song in my TikTok video. Do they get paid somehow? If uh, if they don't get paid, they haven't hit the threshold of what meets like that that certain barrier that is okay. Once you've you know amassed a certain amount of time or earned revenue, now it's no longer yours, and it has to be split amongst the content owner, right? Um, so if, yes, if your podcast is a top 10 podcast and you're opening it up with ludicrous, you know, yelling at everyone in the beginning, then yeah, eventually the, the, the record label, um, is going to start to see a kickback, right? That's Mm -hmm. part of the way that that works. There's just like an ad advertisement works. However long they view that, if they click on it, there's a value placed on that. Um, right. I believe that makes it unique. I also believe the music is what make tic- makes TikTok as a social platform itself more immersive and unique. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what about the filters? Is there any money there? Um, I- I've never been too keen on researching into the filters. I know that if one were to brand or create their own like designer, like if I was a, um, a a shoemaker and I put, you know, created my new shoe and I want to launch it on TikTok so that, um, you know what I mean? Like either way filters work, you could be seen in my shoes, right? That could be, um, people could get sponsored for wear, sponsored to wear certain apparel. They certainly are right now, but I'm not sure where TikTok and or ByteDance's um, revenue and or cut of that is, I would doubt it's anything at all because if they did get into a conversation over it, 
I think that all the influencers would just say, okay, that's fine. I'll wear a white t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Otherwise, why you don't need to give them the money. It's not like they hooked you up with the shirt, went and bought it for you and came back with it. Right. All right. Interesting. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to recap is because you were about to transition into consumers. You talked about um, how e-commerce uh, platforms would partner with mm-hmm. TikTok and take a TikTok would take a percentage of every sale made on the platform. So yes. can you go a little bit more into that consumer side? I would love to. So this has been my view of what, I believe will transpire for quite a bit now. And that is, I and many others agree, the only way that this United States um, actual merger or, or sale acquisition to Oracle, Walmart, Microsoft, is that the current, I think that's still the current, um, uh, like most up-to-date possibility. As far as I know, yeah. Right. The way that I viewed that was, you ever been on, have you been on Instagram lately? Yeah. Can you click on an item and shop and purchase it? Uh, I think so. Yes, you can. Yeah. Check out right there. Secondly, can you purchase items um, online from, let's say, um, hmm. Not on Twitter yet, but if I were to open up an application and you were to tag items you're wearing as like a um, a thrift shop app, I could click on that and purchase it, correct? Yeah. Right. Now, with Walmart and Microsoft partnering with, well, Oracle as well, Walmart has the ability to now distribute and create an entirely new e-commerce um, platform embedded within TikTok for all of its millennial relevant information. I mean, I'm um, uh, products, it's holiday season, right? So here's advertisement for hats, gloves, Xboxes, right? You see someone TikToking themselves playing an esports game. Don't you think it's smart to advertise to them? Here, purchase that system right here with one click. Yeah. Seems to be the Instagram's fashion um, purchasing to TikTok's um, immersive and interactive lifestyle purchasing. Um, that's the way I, I viewed it. Microsoft being the largest cloud hosting provider in the country, in the world. Um, and the security level, the um, financial and user data it can collect, the ability for it to um, process payments, invoices, receipts, um, returns, and have the data on each user is very important, right? So you have Microsoft's infrastructure, because remember, you just lost bike dances. Um, Walmart's ability to provide you any type of and any form of materials, whether it be clothing or flowers, right, on on Mother's Day or something that they're advertising. There's another revenue stream there. And if we consider this as a Walmart, and then if you consider the millennials and Gen Z that don't shop at Walmart, but are on TikTok, I see it being a humongous, if worked out correctly, potential revenue, um, re- not revenue creation, revenue um, innovation, in a sense, that Walmart can put itself back on the map, get itself acquainted with you know what I mean? The younger millennial Gen Z audience and start to analyze what of its products are actually being interested, you know, being pursued, being clicked on. What are 
the average ages of each product. Um, I believe that's where Walmart got itself involved. I believe that that's how TikTok continues to grow and earn significant, significant amounts of revenue outside of the typical social platform, um, hyped up valuations and um, crazy multiples on on revenue. I think TikTok has a much stronger case for whether it stay public or it become a subsidiary of an Amazon, a Walmart, a, a major, you know, I mean, um, retailer while keeping all of its social and technological um, computing capabilities and uh, operations separate, they may be able to have a basically, let's call it the modern day target, right? They got everything depending upon what kind of style you're in, what budget you have, but it's right at your fingertips and you could see who else you know, like, respect, and admire has that exact item. And that's the single greatest um, incentive to buy. The strongest buyer power comes from word of mouth marketing. Yeah. And then another thing with Walmart is uh, I was trying to buy something online, like over the holidays. And I noticed that these weren't products like when I looked, when I searched for it, these weren't products that were being sold only by Walmart. There were people like setting up online stores through Walmart. So that's another thing. Like maybe I could sell my book through Walmart and you're not supporting just Walmart. You're supporting me when you buy the book. Correct. Which I that's the exact same thing as yeah. the, um, as the TikTok is because they need to create that marketplace so that you could actually check out and that if they're hosted somewhere, those items are influencers uploading an item to sell. Right? Yeah. That will expand the Walmart model to allow you and others to create and, and innovate and makers to, to produce, excuse me, to, to produce a television, uh, I mean, a, a TV shirt or to produce I mean, a TV shirt, a television, a t-shirt based on their television show. Um, it allows you to produce, um, you know, custom branded um, material for your entire team, right? There's tons more opportunities once our country and our um, commerce um, tendencies start to tilt which they always do towards those who have influence. What is that famous person wearing and she, and what is she doing? Good. I'm going to go do that. And if I can't, I'm going to make sure that I contact whomever the store is and push for that. Right. So I definitely think it opens up a more Amazon like model where you're at least allowing the creator to earn. Um, I just definitely have my, I have some skeptical, views on how easily this can be taken advantage of, especially not having been born and bred as a United States organization. Hmm. Yeah. um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but before everything happened with the U S government, they had a deal with Shopify to do exactly what you just mentioned. Correct. They were going to virtually it was going to be similar to where you on Instagram, you could tag the items on Shopify. You could basically integrate your Shopify store, which I believe actually is still possible on Instagram. I think Instagram, that's how it handles it. You'd be able to in- integrate your store, choose which items you'd like to sell and the images and list them for sale. Um, Instagram allows for you to just check out with PayPal. And it chips it right to you. Mm-hmm. I've actually purchased, shout out to Barstool. I've actually purchased a couple of the Dave Portnoy shirts on Instagram. Um, seamless, right? I was like, I saw a picture of him wearing it. I clicked it. It was like, oh, I want that. One button and I'm done. Mm-hmm. That to me is, I'm not feeling advertised to. Therefore, I'm more likely to conduct a transaction. That's where I think that 
TikTok has a, a niche in a very, very influential, in, potentially influential space in the e-commerce um, influencer and mobile e-commerce market. Right. Yeah, I was pretty excited for the Shopify deal because we have friends with Shopify stores and that would give them an opportunity to sell. Shout out to Ross, um, aerodrawings.net, where you can buy blueprints of uh, like historical planes. So, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, shout out Ross. He's uh, also been a big help for us too. Um, behind the scenes doing some doing some of the leg work. Uh, so thank you very much, Ross. Yeah, and we have uh, Tara Simply uh, selling candles. That's uh, Diane Allen, right? Diana Allen. Diana Allen, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I also, I, I wanted, oh, if you're listening <laughs> this far into the podcast, um, Brendan and I, we, we're doing some kind of research on TikTok. Could you tell us who your favorite TikTok person is and why? Because we're trying to figure out like why these kids are famous when they're just random kids, right? It's not like Selena Gomez or Kid Cudi on TikTok being the most popular. It's just random kids. Yeah, they could become that. And my interest is, are those who are the most followed also the highest paid and the most well-dressed? And is that the reason why they're viewed as important, relevant, and famous? Or is it just because TikTok has put them up in the high pass in the sway house and they get to be famous for no reason. Um, we're trying to dig into why a, a certain influencer or a certain TikTok user may have more influence over another and why they are so admired. Yeah. So I actually have one theory that I haven't brought up with Brendan. So he's hearing this for the first time now. So we've discussed that Musical.ly is like the original TikTok and then they branded it, rebranded it to TikTok. So my theory is that these kids were like the original Musical.ly and they grew their following and TikTok just like boosted them up a bit. And that's how they grew their following on TikTok to hundreds of millions of people following them on TikTok. And now they're making money because they were the original users of Musical.ly. Um, I believe Musical.ly had like 1.1 million users to TikTok's 2.1 billion. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone out there, but Musical.ly was very, very early in its in its infancy um, when that happened. The idea of the music behind the videos without Musical.ly, I don't know that TikTok exists because that, to me, is the true real differentiator. Some of the dances, the the clever, you know what I mean? Like cuts of the videos in the very beginning, people, you know, women like whomever, Addison Ray, for example, if you find a video where she's not going to be having a song in the background dancing, it's either somewhat to do with the revenue generating as a result of that for her and or TikTok, or it's simply because what? No, 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 like nothing else to do. That's what we're trying to figure out is why, who, and how is the money being circulated amongst the creators of TikTok? Yeah, you actually brought up something interesting with the music because that is TikTok's competitive advantage because like anyone could make up a dance and post it on Snapchat or Instagram, but they can't have the music and the, mu the music is catchy to people. So that catches their attention and then they want to watch like 50 videos of this same person um, dancing or others competing with that same dance, but only TikTok has that music license because of the record label that they own through their parent companies. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to have a little fun with this, uh, next part. So, um, part of revenue research is me just coming up with crazy ideas to, uh, for this industry, or the industry that I'm writing about to like, to maybe use and, you know, maybe cr give me credit in the future. So I wanted or to talk me, about or for me to just shoot him down and make him, make him feel wrong. <laughs> no, no comment there. So I have a bunch of <laughs> revenue ideas that TikTok can use. And I wanted to get your opinion about um, these, Brennan. So my first idea, 
is that when I was first on TikTok, I I wanted to sell my book, right? I was trying to get pre-orders and um, it wouldn't let me like post a link to the book in my bio so I couldn't do like link in bio as I would do on Instagram. So what do you think about the ability to buy like that feature of having the link in the bot, like having, yeah, having the link in the bio right away. So like I sign into TikTok and I pay $10 a month to have the link in my bio. Mm -hmm. And when they include the ability to sell directly through the platform, like say like a Walmart, right? The link in bio is going to take you to a separate payment processor outside of the platform, right? And right. now you've lost your traction, right? Um, the visitor is lost. So right. if you're, let's say, at the end of someone's feed and it's aver- popping up an ad where either way they're getting rev- re- generating revenue by cl- you clicking on the ad and then going to purchase the book, those types can be, you know, I mean, fit into a business model. But that's why I like the, the idea of embedding the ability to purchase is, right? Amazon started out as a bookstore, right? Who's to say that, like, if you were to take the Walmart of Amazon, why wouldn't Walmart have kids' toys or books or ebooks, movies purchasable, right? If there's a clip in the background of, uh, um, audio sample and it's Friday the 13th playing should, you know, l- have a little pop-up right there that says like rent Friday the 13th on stars right now, right? Like those are ways that they could get tons of affiliate revenue by actually engaging, interacting with and honing in on what that actual user is interested in right now. Right. And then I, I just realized another problem with that idea or like a problem is that so for those who don't know the goal of a social media platform is to keep users on there as much as possible so by allowing me to put the link in the bio without having a cut of that i'm going against their goals and that's why they're not going to allow me to uh have that feature right away but the thing about uh, my idea is i'm paying for it so they're getting some revenue from me having to pay for it. Correct. Or if you don't want to have it handled internally, maybe you give them 5% of all of your sales from that link versus 2% from the choosing their native in-app purchasing. Yeah. But also wouldn't that be difficult to track? Cause I'm going off their platform onto like my yeah. website. Data analytics will allow you to do that. That's um, like pixels. They have track, like they have track backs. They allow you to, um, cross, uh, cross domain, cross and cross affiliate, um, tracking. Mm -hmm. And then, so I have three ideas. That was the first one. My second one is boosted posts. So like as a user, I would be able to pay so that more people see my, uh, product or no, my, my post on TikTok. Um, yeah. So I call this user ad revenue. Uh, what do you think about that? I don't, I don't disagree with it. I'm not sure where they are right now Um, in terms of that. I do think that that may screw up a little bit of the interests um, and um, like the, their interests map that they've built over the social map, because it's like, if you right are to sponsor a post and it gets kicked on, right? That's adding no level of interest, right, to basically the front page, but your $40 now has to equate to more than anyone else on the platform would have gener- would have been generating the company using the model and the algorithm that they have been so keen on not even letting the United States get their hands on, right? So that's all I worry about is that it's like, when you saw sponsored posts on Facebook in the beginning, they were all over the top. Instagram, it's it's a guarantee if I see sponsored, it's the one I'm not going to purchase, right? Right. 
and then there there's a chance that someone will there there's there's not a chance someone will abuse that in some way like uh someone will give them ten dollars and maybe try to get people to give them personal information and then hack them so Correct. that's an issue right there right how how are you, how secure is it like their payment information you know what I mean such and such yeah and then so my third idea was it goes against their model currently but it's users pay for ad free an ad free platform so um, yeah. so currently what's the experience like when viewing an ad you can't really tell that it's an ad that's why we're doing this whole episode like i couldn't figure yeah. out how they yeah. were making fun rhetorical but yes um yeah. it's not really that felt right unless yeah. you're sitting on TikTok for hours and hours and hours and scrolling until you can't find anything it's probably rare that you're going to actually see much of the you know what i mean advertisements that are being snuck in there think about if you're uh if i'm me right now i'm wearing this sweatshirt that could be the ad yeah would you know right like it's using the re using the creators as the affiliate advertisement um model almost and some of them are split as the creator gets 80 percent, the advertiser gets 20 and then vice versa if nike is throwing you you know 20 sweatshirts and saying we need you to just like pose here in this so that we can make it go viral and have it be a top item and then sell it for sure all right um is there anything else you want to mention um the only other thing i quickly wanted to mention was full disclaimer um none of this information that i've received and or spoken about today has come from my sister, my sister is an employee of TikTok. We have not discussed even the fact that I'm conducting this episode. Um, most of the, much of this is through knowledge that we've developed in our relationship, my sister and I, but mostly through research that Alex and I have discovered and found sometimes alarming and sometimes informative to the rest of the public. Hmm. Right. Uh, where can people find you online? Um, please follow me um, on Twitter at B as in Brendan, M as in Michael, Weinstein7 at G, uh, Weinstein7 on Twitter and email. You can catch me at BMWeinstein7 at gmail.com. All right. And we'll put that in the show notes too. Um, follow my nephew on TikTok, uh, Pitchman. 525 pitch as in p-i-c-h um thank you for listening <laughs> follow me on twitter at one, one more shout out follow no code no problem my buddy ryan meyer on tiktok if you're interested in um software development web development or visual development yeah for sure um thank you for listening have a nice day bye